Good morning. Um, I have yet to go to bed. Gone to. I, bleh, I have yet to go to bed. So, um, sitting here eating my not healthy meal. It's uh, seasoned curly fries with chili and cheese, and um, it's like uh, French onion and um, sour cream whipped together with spicy mayo on it. No, I'm not pregnant. I just really like, I guess you call it stadium food. A lot of people call it stadium food because um, it's like a loaded like cheese fry kind of thing. Anyways. <clears throat> I want to talk about what depression is. What it looks like. Um. Right now is the best opportunity because, and I'm going to be very honest with you guys, and I'm telling you this not to get any pity or any attention. I'm letting y'all know what it looks like because I'm going through it right now. Depression is, you're in the middle of making your loaded uh, cheese fries. Um and you remember how badly you miss your grandparent or somebody who's not with you anymore. And depression is when your mind revisits something petty like for instance, <clears throat> like um, your, let's say your spouse is doing the night shift and you're alone and you just, you miss those times where you would just cuddle into bed at night or they'll be like, okay, honey, let's go to bed now. Depression is missing them. Even though you know you're going to see them in the morning, but it still, it still hurts a little bit, but it's okay because you know this is the best job they've ever, they probably ever had, and you do not want to get in the way of it. Depression is remembering all the people that are not in your life anymore. And depression is missing people that you know are just a phone call away, but you don't want. You don't want to upset them, and you won't, don't want them to know that you cry because you miss them, even though they say you could just come visit anytime. And the reason why you don't let yourself go and just visit them whenever you want to is because your depression you want to see them when you're happy you want to see them when you're at your best you don't want to taint the source of your happiness or smiles with your depression and you know what you can overcome this. It may be a little difficult while you're going through it. Oh, I gotta sit up. It may be difficult when you're going through it. I'm trying really hard not to cry, <laughs> but it may be hard. It may be upsetting. But you can get through it. Just have yourself a little cry. And breathe in. Hold it. Breathe out. 
and reassure yourself that everything is going to be okay. Your spouse is going to come home in the morning. Those people that you love and miss that are alive are there and waiting for you to get over yourself. And those people that are gone, even though they're gone, they still live on in your memories, in your thoughts, in your heart. <clears throat> because you're doing the one thing that they can't do, and that is live. Because they would want you to live. Even though your heart is screaming, even though it hurts so bad, like there's a hole in you from where they were. It's okay. You're supposed to miss them. You don't ever get over their absence. You don't ever get over. I'm not going to sit here and say that time will heal it. No, it doesn't. Oh, shoot. I'm going to be very honest with you. Time does not heal that. Now, if it was a breakup, yeah, time will heal it. But if that person's dead and they're gone, it doesn't heal. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it will, because it's the nice thing to say. The truth is, <clears throat> you get stronger with every passing moment of that pain, that vacancy. You learn to fill it. That space doesn't stay big. It shrinks like it does heal, but it never fully closes. It never fully closes because you're always going to hold space for them. And that space right there is the memories, the love, the memory of their voice. Even though there's some days where you forgot what they sound like the way they smell like my grandmother she always had this um smell of cedar mothballs <laughs> um and uh favorite perfume was Windsong, but she used just a little bit and hairspray. Mix all that together. That was her first. And for me, that was a, f a smell, an odor of comfort, knowing that she was near. I know we expect our grandparents to pass, but I never got over it. Growing up, I didn't have any friends. And I would call my grandmother every night and just talk to her for hours. She was my first friend. I really tried hard not to cry. I really tried hard not to cry during this. 
but the best time to talk about something like this morning, sadness, depression, is when you're going through it. <laughs> a lot of people <clears throat> I stay away from a lot because I don't want them to see me hurt. <laughs> I apologize for this it's not, but when you cry, don't you get a stuffy nose? The thing is Um <coughs> It's just hard minding your own business and all of a sudden boom depression hits you can't rely on other people to make your depression go away and better you have to it's it's like a maze that you go through every time all the time you start to learn the corners the turns when to turn here when to turn there <laughs> My depression is like a maze that I know very well. I know how to get out of it. I fight it continuously with positivity. Boo-hoo, I'm sad I miss my grandmother. Well, she wouldn't want you sitting there crying. She wouldn't want you sitting there crying about her. She would want you to remember all the fun and good things that she tried to do for you. She would try to <clears throat> cheer you up, say something funny. Oh, my grandmother had a lot of jokes and most of them were dirty jokes. Everyone that is gone, friends included, would want you to. <sighs> they would want you to find a reason to be happy. They don't want you sitting there being in pain and crying over them not being there. Also, if you have a pet, it's really handy too. Everyone meet Eros. <laughs> Honestly, I really think he could classify as a emotional support animal because <clears throat> when I started getting upset, he laid right beside me and he started nuzzling. He also does that little tap, 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 like, hello, I'm right here, are you okay? Sweet boy. But, um, <clears throat> this is what depression looks like. Depression is when your makeup wears off after crying so much. I had makeup on, but it just went down my face. I cleaned that up, though. Depression is, it comes without warning. Sometimes it comes without cause. Um, depression is someone who works really hard to make someone feel better. And they treat themselves as an afterthought. <sighs> you have to constantly, when it hits you, 
retaliate in a positive light. Like, boohoo, I don't have any more. I say boohoo. Basically, I'm sad because you have to find out why. I'm sad because I have no time for myself. Make time. Do one thing for yourself that you want to do. <laughs> <coughs> or I'm sad because I'm broke look at your finances get rid of some things move some things around and give yourself some hope or sell some things that you're not using which I'm trying to do, but nobody's buying anything. Um, <clears throat> basically, give yourself hope. Nobody knows your situation better than you do. Sometimes reaching out to a friend or someone you know will help you feel better will work. And be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. So, well, venting this out actually made me feel better. Love and light to you all, and have a good night.